Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us here on this CTA webinar. I'm very, very pleased to have uh, Mark and Ken and Chris here with me to talk about uh, both how CTA got started and where things are going in the cybersecurity industry looking forward. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Thanks, uh, gentlemen, for taking the time out of your busy schedules to talk with me today. I'm Michael Daniel. I'm the president and CEO of the Cyber Threat Alliance, which is an organization dedicated to enabling cybersecurity companies to share threat intelligence with each other and thereby improve the security of the digital ecosystem. So let me just quickly turn to uh, each of the speakers to give a quick uh, introduction, and then we'll get started on some questions. So uh, Mark, why don't I start with you? Uh, sure, well, thanks for having me and everybody uh joining us today, a great celebration for the CTA. It's fantastic to see it doing so well after so long. Uh, yeah, I was uh, hearkening back as to how the whole thing started uh, getting prepared for this and uh, thinking about uh, X, whatever it was, probably six years ago, um, thinking here at uh, Palantir Networks about um, uh, the way the future was gonna look in security, which is playing out, which is gonna be a lot, a lot of security companies. Uh, and there should be, we need a lot of innovation. Um, and, and there's going to be a lot of data and analytics around those things. And from a threat perspective, um, the idea that any one company was going to be able to do everything um, to combat threats is you know, not going to happen, right? So how can we actually start to work together and share information in an industry that is, um, in a good way, very competitive, meaning from an innovation perspective? And, and that led to uh, lunch, Ken, if you recall, you and I, um, where we talked about this idea and um, and decided that it was a good thing that first of all, that people, the, the actual players, CEOs would, would, who already knew each other from some extent of seeing, you know, RSA and things like that actually spent time together to uh, figure out a better way, you know, for information sharing, uh, despite the competitive aspects of the business. And and uh, so Ken and I talked about that and, and said, this is a good idea, we should do it. And then, then we called Chris and at the time, I was running McAfee, and uh, and he's he's pretty brilliant. So he saw the saw the beauty immediately, and then uh, and then Greg over at uh, Symantec, and um, so we thought if we could get the major players involved, um, hopefully a lot of the world would see the the benefits of this would follow. So if we fast forward today and say, you know, dozens of companies involved with this, um, uh, you know, a standalone, uh, very um, you know, stable and um, sufficient, you know, nonprofit organization run by uh, Michael, who I would have never, um, you know, in the beginning imagined we could get somebody that caliber to run this. And, uh, you know, it's really been a, a success story. So much to do, so much to go in the future, but just a little insight of how it all came together as a lot of things do over, you know, in this case, a cup of coffee with Ken and, you know, <laughs> and here we are today. So really great to watch. Oh, thanks. So, you know, Ken, if you want to give a little bit of insight and, you know, introduce yourself and give a little bit of insight into your perspective on the problems that you were trying to solve with um, with CTA. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael, Mark and Chris. Uh, also, uh, uh, Michael, I appreciate your, your great leadership in the last four years building CTA today is, uh, is the most successful uh, cybersecurity uh, alliance in the industry. Uh, I think it's called the, the member. It's, a, it's about 30 member now. Uh, from like the idea Mark and I had uh, six years ago. And uh, yeah, we were seeing actually it's pretty interesting uh, because uh, one side we're fighting all the cyber crime. So they are probably a little bit more organized uh, than, than, than the outside. And uh, that's where we say, hey, we, we really need to working together, share the information, and uh, because each company covers some part of infrastructure security, and uh, if we can really work together, we'll be more effective. And at the same time, we can kind of uh, uh, also more efficient ourselves uh, among the company and uh, and share all this uh, intelligent information and the more closely working together to fight cyber crime, like we did a few years ago for the Crypto War Three. And uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea, and also with uh, Mark's leadership that time, and uh, uh, he's uh, he has a great uh, connection. Bring bring Michael uh, on board to lead the organization, so we see huge growth in the last four years. And also, kind of remind me, like uh, probably about twenty years ago, that time John Thompson still leading Michael, uh, still leading uh, Symantec. 
So he formed the, they call CSIA, it's a Cyber Security Industry Alliance. Uh, we were very successful for a few years, but after he left, uh, uh, Symantec, now he's a chairman of Microsoft, and, uh, and then probably there's no industry alliance anymore uh, in the cybersecurity space. So that's what when Mark and I, we meet together six, six years ago, we had a lunch. We said, hey, if we can really kind of more organized, uh, better and share more intelligent information, that, that's probably what benefit for the whole industry and also eventually promote all these uh, uh, better cybersecurity and enable a lot of uh, new business uh, online. Uh, so that, that, that's the idea we had, and uh, we're happy with, uh, with you uh, leading and also Chris uh, supporting, got all this started. So that's where initially we have all these six biggest cybersecurity companies all joined together and uh, formed an organization uh, with Michael's leadership. So we keep growing better and better. And also thank you for all the team uh, and, and we, we are ju just a figurehead, but it's most of the job is done by the team in each company. And so they did a great job and keeping building from the technology, the product level, sharing the information, daily operations. So they, 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 they did a fantastic job and get, get us to today. So it's a, a appreciate everybody's support. Yeah, thanks, Ken. And, you know, I think, uh, Chris, you know, I'll turn to you to sort of say when you sort of heard the idea from, you know, Mark and, and Ken, sort of how did you see it and what, 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 you know, how did you see the problems that it was, you know, that it was going to address and why it was beneficial for, for McAfee? Yeah, well, thank you, Michael, and, and congratulations to all of the CTA uh, and our extended uh, membership and family for the, the this great milestone. It's, um, it's just great to see what we've been able to accomplish over the years. And Michael, thanks to you for your leadership and bringing us this far and for where you will take us. And we've not yet not yet gone there yet. So we're, we're I'm excited about the future here. A um, couple things, as as you pointed out, I was I was leading McAfee at the time when when Mark and and Ken reached out. Uh, to me, it was an obvious decision to, to make. I mean, it, as I think Mark pointed out quite well, there's no way you fight this problem alone. And there's, you know, the, the tendency, unfortunately, I think, in the cybersecurity industry has been to hoard information. You know, we, we find something, we kind of saw it as a competitive advantage for an individual company or even in the government sometimes, which unfortunately model this behavior. You, you keep the intelligence to yourself. But I think what we realize is that actually, if you can share intelligence, if you can work collectively on some of these problems, we can elevate the entire industry and do a better job at the ultimate goal, which is to protect our customers, to keep people safe from, from these attacks, to make more progress rather than limited progress in very specific ways. And I don't think we have to look any further than our most recent cybersecurity incident to see why the work continues, number one, and why it's still incredibly important. Uh, because even with what we're seeing in, in the solar winds attack, the need to share information, the need to help the industry quickly respond across the board with our defenses uh, enabled with the latest information, the latest intelligence is critical to the ability to respond to, to this attack. And you know, I'm no longer at McAfee, now at Microsoft. Even at Microsoft, one of the first things we identified was the need for threat intelligence sharing, transparency. Um, and, and that's just, I think, something that we have to continue to work on in the industry. And it's a mission that the CTA set about many years ago, continues to this day. And it's why I think it's such important work that we're doing to, and it, you know, it's really it sort of raised the waterline, if you will, for the entire industry's ability to fight and solve these problems, which are ongoing. Yeah, and I think, thanks, Chris. And I, I think the, you know, I look at it very much as, you know, the CTA having, a, you know, a threefold mission. You know, obviously, as a membership association, you know, our primary mission is to enable our members to better protect their customers and clients. But we also want to enable uh, the industry as a whole to work with governments and others to disrupt what the bad guys are doing. And then, as you just said, the third part is to raise that level of cybersecurity across the entire ecosystem to make everyone uh, better off. Um, as we've been talking about, you know, we're the 
part of this webinar is celebrating CTA's fourth birthday, because four years ago at the end of January, um, CTA was formally incorporated as a, as a nonprofit. Um, but as Ken and Mark were actually alluding to, you know, the conversations around CTA and sort of it, its existence as a sharing organization started a little bit before that, um, you know, actually going on close to seven years ago, six and a half years ago, um, back in 2014 for some of the, uh, the original uh, idea. Um, so obviously CTA existed for a little while as a more informal arrangement between, you know, several of uh, your organizations. Um, sort of, um, Ken, maybe we can start with you, but why, or Mark, whichever one of you wants to take this, why did you decide to make CTA into a nonprofit with its own, with its own staff? Uh, what sort of drove that, that evolution? I think it's the it's the lessons we learned from the uh, I'm in the industry for for about thirty years. Like lessons learned from the CSIA uh, about twenty years ago. Uh, so that time, like I said, John Thompson lead uh, the CSIA organization. But after he left, and then that organization just just disappeared, right? So that's where we say, hey, if we want to make this go long term, uh, hope forever, and uh, definitely the non profit organization with a uh, full time staff is the way to go. And uh, we're we're glad Mark bring 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 you in and uh, making the first uh, present and uh, build C CTA ground up and uh, we're quickly become a very successful organization. So I do believe the non-profit is the way uh, we can keep this going. Even there's some personal changing going forward, but it's uh, with all the members supporting, and uh, this this non-profit will be will be will be the best for for it. Yeah, one of their comment there, I go is uh, again spot on. Um, is you know we also didn't want the organization to be captured in any way, if you will, from uh, the entities. We we knew that the entities, that the companies have to be involved forever. You know, from a CTA perspective, and um, otherwise you don't really don't have anything. But we didn't want the um, the the CTA to be captured in any way by an entity. Um, or by an individual. Ken brings up a very good point about how, you know, sometimes the influence of one person can make things, you know, happen or not happen. Uh, so that was really important for us. And also we thought it was really important that there not be any, um, that there not be any sense of uh, a, a profitable business associated with this. You know, Chris mentioned earlier uh, that, you know, security for a very long time and still to some extent today, you know, values information as it should, but values it less as a something uh, for the good of everybody as, as opposed to themselves. And, you know, one of the things we were worried about if this was not a, was, was a for-profit organization was uh, to get kind of hooked on the adrenaline of, of, you know, making money on the information is exactly what we were trying to share. You know, So there were some reasons that, you know, were structural. And by the way, it wasn't obvious at the beginning of the conversations that we, we started off with. We, we toyed around with all sorts of, you know, ideas and, um, and we had lots of uh, lawyers involved and, you know, and lots of people in the industry to give us advice. And uh, so I, I think we came to a very good place with it based on the success we're, we're seeing today. But most importantly, as you know, probably better than everybody, um, you know, the CTA doesn't exist for any one entity. It exists for everybody. And it's going to survive, you know, any individual's participation with it. It's exactly what it should be to have longevity uh, because it stands on its own two feet today. Yeah, no, and I think that's right. And the 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 ability for CTA to serve as a neutral ground, if you will, for companies to to come together is actually has proven to be really important over the last four years. Um, that that has been a very useful feature of um, of CTA. Um, and so I think that you know, as you said, it also wasn't obvious when you when you started. Right. Um, but, you know, I think it, it's in, in retrospect, it's one of those things like, why did it take so long for us to, you know, figure that out? As, as Ken pointed out, there was stuff going back, you know, 20 years ago. Um, Chris, you know, maybe I'll start with you on this one. Do, you know, do you think there were particular factors that sort of drove, you know, CTA coming together and sort of, you know, either in 2014 when it got going or 2016 when you were making the decision to, you know, turn it into a formal nonprofit, you know, what were some of the particular factors that, that came together to make that possible? I think one of the factors is leadership. 
and I think Ken <clears throat> nicely articulated, you know, the importance of you know, several companies coming together to decide to do this. You know, I give I give these two guys a lot of credit. You know, there was a lot of you know pre sort of CTA becoming an organization, you know, formal organization. You know, what you had was several leaders of companies deciding that you know we would fund this and just and you know we would get people from our teams. You know, we would do work. You know, I, I know. You know, again, I give a lot of credit to you know, really you know Palo Alto under Mark's leadership. Fortinet under Ken's leadership, you know, just like putting people, dedicating resources, building out some of the infrastructure to do this. You know, we had people involved from McAfee at the time, but it took leadership, number one, to, to make it happen. And just a belief that this was the right thing to do, uh, even in a time when uh, it wasn't necessarily obvious to everyone. I think the second factor was uh, just that you know, we saw the need for intelligence sharing uh, in order to get smarter about some of the, the kinds of attacks that we were seeing at the time. I mean, this was at the, if you recall, kind of back in 2014, you know, this was when ransomware was starting to, you know, become a much more prevalent uh, part of the cyber crime, you know, diaspora. And that was, you know, this was a, a problem that we really wanted to work on. And I, I harken back that again, even pre, you know, sort of CTA's formal incorporation, uh, we did a lot of work on cybercrime. We did a lot of work on ransomware, uh, and some of the better work that we did was teams collaborating to uh, to really you know get smarter about some of the the ransomware families that we were you know we were battling at that point in time. And so th those were some of the factors I think that that were required in order for us to to really make a go at this. But you know what I always found remarkable was just the fact that as you know companies could come together. You know we we weren't asked by the government to do this. We weren't asked by you know some other entity. You know it was really the leaders. You know in our you know sort of just kind of our personal relationships that helped us you know nurture the organization. Uh, but I think Ken said it well, like organizations have to be, you know, enduring on their own. Uh, they can't be dependent upon because, you know, several of us have gone on to to do other things today. And without, you know, sort of that transition point to CTA becoming its own organization with its own leadership, Michael, you in this case, uh, and others who joined, uh, I don't think we'd be sitting here today uh, kind of celebrating in the same way. So, um, while I look back on the origins and am proud of, of you know, sort of what we were able to do, uh, I'm, I'm more proud that we set up something that will outlast, you know, sort of any individual leader or uh, the founding organizations who were a part of it. Yeah, no, then I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, can, can I say Mark, anything you want to? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, uh, to, to continue on with Chris's point there, one of the things that we also realized pretty early on, I think we all did this, was, um, you know, uh, Chris alluded to, seems like a very long time ago, but only six or seven years ago, um, you know, the idea of uh, the value of information was driving security in a different direction, which was the hoarding aspect of it. You know, but one of the things that I got loud and clear just talking to customers, and I think all these guys did, right, was, you know, you talk to a customer and um, they would say, very rightfully so, you know, security is a situation generally where you should, you know, information ideally would be gathered once and used for many security purposes, as opposed to gathered again and again and again and used for specific purposes, right? And um, they're super frustrated, you know, super frustrated with, you know, if you want to have really good security, you have to buy my thing, and then you have to buy Ken's thing, and then you have to buy Chris's thing, and, you know, and, you know, so our discussions were about, look, you know, everybody should compete in security and what they're really good at, uh, but the actual data and the threat intelligence is not the place uh, where a competition should thrive because it's it's just unfair to everybody and it's slowing us down relative to the bad guys and that was a giant you know kind of breakthrough and uh, and I remember very specifically I knew I knew we were onto something here um, because we all went out and talked about it with our customers but I distinctly remember uh, one customer I won't mention but a big company um, sent me an RFP. And uh, we probably all got the RFP, right? Yeah. But they sent me an RFP, but they sent it to me saying, hey, look at question number 32 or whatever it was. And it said, are you a member of this, the CTA? And if not, why not? And that was the moment from like, this is, we got it, you know, right? Because when the customers 
are demanding that we actually work together in ways that we can, if, you know, if we can rise above our you know, selfish interest rate in areas where we should work together, which is threat intelligence, um, then it's kind of what inevitable, you know, that that's going to happen over time and the market's pressuring you to do that. And, and I think that was a real kind of turning point to see, uh, you know, the customers weigh in. And I've yet to talk to a customer uh, who did not love the idea of the CTI. Just say, yeah, we should be doing this for a long time. And who, who's not doing it, right? Let me know so I can call them. So that was a big mindset shift. Yeah, and I think the, you know, that sort of that idea that, you know, we want the competition to occur, like you were saying, Mark, but we want it to occur higher up the value chain. Right. That for the customer, the the value of you know competing on limited sources of information is not that is not that huge. But if the information is more common and the competition then occurs between all of your companies on what you do with that information, that's much more valuable to the customer and therefore much more valuable to the the ecosystem as a whole. Um, and I think that's that has really you know, that view of the world is becoming much more, you know, much more common. It, absolutely, with cloud and analytics, you know, our, our phrase, the, the the three of us, and then uh, use constantly, and I know Mike will you know use as well is, you know, we should compete on what we can do with what we know, not what we know, right? So, what can you do with it, right? And and everybody ideally would have a common level of understanding of what is known, because that's the only way we're going to win here, and we can all differentiate then about. What do you do with what you know? Um, and that's the proper place to compete in security. Yeah. So I think sort of turning, you know, from kind of what came together a few years ago, but looking at, you know, kind of where we stand now in the environment, um, obviously, you know, I mean, certainly my experience here at, at CTA is that I, I, I think one of the, one of the misunderstandings though from uh, people who aren't in the business is they think that information sharing ought to be easy. Like you just sort of agree and you do it. And, you know, all of us know that that's not the, that's just not the case that, that in fact, actually information sharing is hard work. It takes investment and it takes uh, commitment um, as we've been discussing. Um, but, you know, Maybe you could start with Chris on this one, but what what do you think actually makes information sharing such an such a hard problem and such an ongoing challenge? Why do we continually sort of struggle with it? Because you know it's it's one of those things that from the outside a lot of people think like, why haven't you guys like solved this already? Well, I think there's a there's a couple categories of challenges. Uh, one we've talked about now a little bit, which is cultural in the security industry. Um, you know, and even if you think about it from a governmental perspective, a lot of cyber information traditionally has been classified information, hard for government to share with private sector. Um, within the private sector, traditionally, information has been treated as something that was a competitive advantage. Um, and so, you know, traditionally, many firms didn't want to share. I think Mark said it really well. Um, our vision was let's compete on what we do with the information, not the actual information itself. So the threat intelligence itself. There's so there's a whole cultural aspect of how you treat threat intelligence um, in the cybersecurity space, and I, and I think that culture, that cultural transformation is something that's still a work in progress uh, as I look across the industry. The second thing is it's also technically not as simple as it sounds, you know, so somebody who's not been working in the industry may not understand, you know, there's, you know, different because of the way the industry has grown up um, with a relatively limited set of standards and a ways in which we share, you know, form even basic things like how we format information across the different tool sets, the different ways companies approach things. Um, you know, there's, you know, you, just, it's not as simple as sort of saying, let me, let me pass you a certain, like an Excel spreadsheet with information. You know, the volume of information is, is large and growing. Formats are different. You know, network security tools look at threat information one way, endpoint security tools a different way. I'm oversimplifying, but the point is, technically even, there has been a limited traditionally set of standards 
and approaches and formats for information. So, you know, and Michael, you know, you took up this task when uh, you're, you know, as you formed your team, there's been a lot of work done in the CTA just on a technical level to normalize information in a way that it can be, it actually can be shared both input and as well as consumed in the form of output that is going to allow firms to do a better job of uh, actually interpreting that information and, and, and employing it um, in a defensive posture. So, you know, I think there's the cultural aspect to it, and I think some of that culture has led to lack of standardization. And so, you know, one of the areas of bodies of work, I think that, you know, CTA and others, the government, you know, can, can continue to tackle is how do we do a better job of standardizing formats, inputs and outputs of, of threat intelligence, defining what, what we mean even at different levels, right? Because basic, you know, there's, there's raw data and there's all the way up through how do you enhance that data to make it more usable threat intelligence. Um, again, I think there's progress has been made, but still a ton of work to be done uh, for the industry to have, you know, good definitions, good formats and good ability to share. Yeah, no, and I think that that's actually one of the things that distinguishes CTA, right, is we actually, um, we settled on a on using a standard. At the time, it was, you know, STIX uh, 1.2. Now we use the, the Structured Threat Intelligence Exchange STIX 2.0 format. Um, and, you know, we find uh, when we bring on, you know, now we're up to 32 uh, companies that are members of the alliance. And when we bring on new companies, that is often one of the hardest hurdles for them to get over is to convert their data into or put their data into that sticks format. Um, but we had to do that in order to actually enable just the sharing to occur. So, I mean, so, you know, if you wanted to get beyond, you know, Excel spreadsheets and PDF files where everybody was retyping it, um, you had to settle on a, on a standard. Um, and so we did that. And that was one of the things that, um, you know, that, that enabled us to thrive. I mean, I think another, you know, challenge um, in this uh, in this area, you know, if you look at a lot of sharing organizations, they suffer from a free rider problem, um, and so you know, and that continues to this day. Um, you know, Mark, you want to talk a little bit about how you, you decided to deal with that from the CTA perspective? Yeah, yeah, and Ken, Ken can jump in here too because he had a lot of uh, really, really good ideas around this. But the uh, you know the problem. Um, the, and potentially an obvious problem other than one we just covered, which is in, information is uh, only valuable when it's useful, right? So uh, if we're, we, could, we could all share information by uh, emailing spreadsheets to each other on threat intelligence, but by the time you got it, it's, you know, it's uh, stale, and then what do you actually do with it, right? So that was one practical thing. Uh, but another concept uh, we talked a lot about, you know, specifically Ken and I was um, – uh, could you know? Could you ultimately create kind of a marketplace concept here, right? Which was, um, if you shared the threat information, that's a that's a good thing. But if I've spent, uh, you know, or, or any organization has spent um, ten million dollars to create to create the threat information through offerings, um, and then another company can come in who's a competitor to me and and get it all, you know, for nothing. Um, that's a problem, right? you know. So how could we create, for lack of a better term, like economy here that we could share the information and you would you would get value points, you know, value on depending on what you put in, because all the information's not the same either. You know, some things are worth more. Have I ever seen this before at all in the wild or am I, am I the third person to confirm it? You know, um, and certain companies would see things, whether geographically um, or level of detail or by by uh, vertical um, that could be incredibly useful, even though they may not be putting a lot of information in, right? So they should get a lot of value for that. And other ones would just put a lot of information in. So the concept of like an economy, and, and, and Ken had a lot of really good ideas about this early on, uh, so that everybody would be incented uh, to share and get over the free rider concept. And remember, Ken, you probably recollect those conversations better than I do because you were more of the economist than me, but uh, you know that, that seemed to be working out. So. Yeah, I agree with uh, what Mark and uh, Chris said. As uh, is uh, yeah, how we can build a system, and each company like uh, like uh, more willing to share all the information they had, and at the same time, uh, also drive some industry standard like the stick standard, 
and then that's making the whole industry benefit from it. And, and uh, that's very important. So that's where, like Michael, you did a great job to, to build out this system with the team and then automate the process because each day there's a millions to billions of all this kind of intelligent information need to be processed, right? Without the, the standard format, without all the automation system and also without a company waiting to share in, uh, this were not working. So that's where, like uh, like Mark said, in early days, and uh, Mark is really <clears throat> what has all this great idea, how, how to use in this uh, incentive company to share information, create a point system, at the same time publish, like a later Michael, oh, perfectly, like publish the weekly and monthly, and that's encourage all the company to contribute and not holding back any information. And also the team, I give a lot of credit to the team, did a great job. So they, they really working very hard and very dedicated to all this CTA project and uh, making all this possible. So that's, that's really, I think we, we've become the, the biggest, most successful cybersecurity alliance in the whole industry. And uh, like doing the, the WAF and all these other, it's, oh, wow, the CTA is, is amazing. And we get all this best information. Like Mark said, even a lot of customers, they, they're making this uh, be part of CTA as a, as a requirement, right? To, to, so that's what makes sure, so they can get the latest intelligent information, they can get all of the protection they need in real time. So that, that's where the, the, the system actually works out, seems pretty, pretty well so far. Yes, and I think the other piece that was critical to differentiating CTA and addressing some of the problems, right, was we also decided to, um, not allow for anonymous submissions. So while you anonymize the customer data, we don't want customer data, I don't get customer data, don't want it, don't need it, don't wanna to have to protect it. But the data that comes into CTA is um, all identified with the submitter. So there's no such thing as an anonymous submission into our platform. You can always see where uh, where all the data or you know originated. And I think that's also really important too because that means all of our members have to stand behind what they send to us. Um, and so again, it's sort of using that incentive structure and that, uh, that market structure to try to drive, uh, to drive that. And you know, Mark, it's very interesting that now that we're starting to be up to a larger number of members, um, you can really start to see sort of the distribution emerge. And it's, it's, it's like almost like a nice bell curve. There's a few members that provide a fairly small number of indicators, but a whole lot of context. There's a few members that provide very vast numbers of indicators with lower context, and most of the companies are somewhere in between, right? Um, which is exactly what you would expect, but the the incentive structure sort of allows for those different uh, those different business models to to emerge. Um, yeah, you know, and I think that's that's been really. You know, all of those things make for, um, you know, a very robust organization that's a little bit different than anything else that's um, that's out there right now. Um, and those other elements serve their function in the ecosystem too. But you know, I think CTA plays a a unique role there. Um, you know, I think sort of looking forward, you know, projecting out now that we've you know CTA is. Uh, past the, you know, past four and, you know, we're looking at, you know, continuing on and, you know, we're continuing to grow. Um, you know, where do you see sort of the, uh, you know, the cybersecurity industry and sort of threat sharing, where do we need to go from here? What are the, we've identified some of the problems that we're still working on, but what do we think some of the next kind of the frontiers of some of this, uh, some of the problems that we need to work on? And may, Ken, I'll start with you on this one. Yeah, I, uh, Michael, like I said, it's a, it's a cyber security is a, is a fast growing, more dynamic uh, space. And uh, there's a lot of things come up every day. And so that's what we need to uh, also uh, move in more fast to respond to all these uh, new challenges. And uh, I, I believe CTA is starting to build uh, the best platform and also uh, uh, starting to become kind of a industry standard, uh, and uh, if some company, they feel not part of CTA, they, they're missing something. Uh, on the other side, they also probably need to, uh, uh, like, uh, keeping the, the training, the education going forward, because uh, we can bring this to uh, to more broad audience, right? Whether 
go to certain university research institute or some other like uh, service provider uh, or some some bigger customer so so they can leverage all the information all the all the, the great job all the tool all the system the team build up and the benefit from it and the more effectively fighting the cyber crime uh, so that that's a, there's there's a lot of uh, opportunity going forward to keeping growing this uh, because so far we're building quite well uh, the system, the form, and the tool, and uh, and all the company kind of all contribute quite a lot, make it successful today. But going forward, we can make it even bigger uh, and uh, get all the other 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 company or, or organization and uh, also a more broad uh, audience benefit from all the all the success all the successful things we we built here. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Sort of, how do you see, you know, where where we need to keep going? I think the need for the CTA is uh, going to keep growing, um, and and likely that the CTA, um, with other understand, there's other information sharing paradigms out there, um, probably is going to be the uh, the biggest one, and um, and hopefully a hub for not only industry but government as well over time. And and my reason for that is um, I'm I'm pretty sure we'll you know we'll see how things things play out. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, you need to have a ton of innovation and security because it just moves so fast. Um, a lot of that information is increasingly based on um, data. I'm not going to use AI, ML, kind of like overused sort of term, but the um, so I don't, I, there, there's aspects of analytics for sure associated with it, but it has to work on a data source, right, And is my point. And as, as some companies become increasingly um, um, relevant, you know, in size of being able to gather data, you know, Chris at Microsoft now, Ken is company's done very well, Palatine Networks has done, done well, but you know, the there's a there's a few companies that have increasingly more data uh, because they're being standardized upon uh, by the, the customer base. And then um, and then eventually uh, that data is you know, in the cloud and being opened up to other parties. So there'll be a lot more smaller companies who actually don't have to collect the data, right? In order to do something fantastic for the customer. And I think that's really the way the ecosystem is going to evolve. And and uh, so if that's right, um, then uh, as some of these uh, data sources and repositories get bigger and bigger and bigger over time, the need for, um, you know, an entity like the CTA uh, should really accelerate uh, to say, well, in addition to those large data sources, there's this one that gets feeds from pretty much everybody, right, of size and relevance, plus all the contextual ones from the smaller players as well, and everybody can trust it as a way, as you know, as an entity that has no dog in the hunt, right, other than uh, making sure that everybody gets that information as fast as possible, um, and hopefully they can use it then, right, as fast as possible. But speed is you know, scale and speed here are the uh, both the enemy and and our friends, right? Uh, for security, and um, you know, I think the CTA has a has um, the advantage uh, already of being large and moving quickly, and will be forced to in a very positive way to continue to do that. And then you get the network effect of that, which will make it increasingly relevant to uh, to companies over. Yeah, no, I think I think that's right, and when you combine. I think the, you know, the expansion of what we have connected to the internet, the continued, you know, growth of, um, you know, they, it, it's really not fair to even call it the internet of things. It's really just the internet, right? You know, the growth of the internet um, into more and more spaces, like it just makes it even, and you couple that with the fact that now we're so digitally dependent, right, as a society that, you um, the, the the need for cybersecurity is only going to keep growing, right? And it's going to keep accelerating. And so, you know, Chris, I think, you know, from, you know, Microsoft has sort of seen that, you know, that growth, but also the growth in the bad guy side, right? Like, you know, used to, like you could, you could, you could, you could actually know like all of the major groups out there. You could keep that in your head, right? And now you can't hardly uh, keep up with that. And so I think that's another area, another reason, and a place that we're going to have to continue looking at um, is that you know there's both on the nation state side, uh, huge growth in the number of players out there, but also on the cyber criminal side because it turns out that at least right now cyber crime is a pretty good business to be in. Um, so. You know, how do you, Chris? May, how do you see sort of CTA contributing to combating those sorts of threats? 
Well, I see a, a few things, Michael. One is, and, and you just you just alluded to it. You know, cybercrime is a good business, and uh, you know, one of my uh, concerns is if we don't deal with some of the other tools of the trade versus just trying to st- block attacks or find them and stop them once they've happened. Um, we're not going to be successful. What are some of the other tools? Well, anonymous payments, cryptocurrencies being the number one enabler. And I think that some of the role of the CTA can be to work with um, governments and others that, you know, around the world that, you know, can help uh, deal with some of the anonymization of, of, you know, the payments that go on, you know, in these attacks. It's we, we've got to deal with a, a, the problem. It's a systemic problem. And, you know, I've said this many times in my life, you know, a lot of what happens in cyberspace is frankly no different than what happens uh, in our physical world from a crime perspective or an espionage perspective. It just happens way faster and at a, at a totally different scale than you can possibly um, imagine. Uh, and so that that has to be dealt with. And I think CTA can play a role there. The other thing I'll say is, you know, we're entering an era where the power of the developer is really important. And so, you know, one of this this platform that CTA has been developing for a number of years as an enabler for developers to incorporate some of the way they the way they use threat intelligence in what they're building, I think is also critical. So, you know, as I, you know, as I think about where the CTA needs to go, you know, certainly I will encourage you to continue to think about how can we enable developers, you know, who are building the, the foundational elements of our products, our capabilities, you know, to incorporate threat intelligence, to incorporate, you know, the collective wisdom of the industry into the product sets that, that they're, they're developing. So there's, a, there's sort of a, an aspect of policy work, uh, but then there's also an evolution around, you know, developers and where we're going with technology that I think is critical to, uh, to keep in mind. Uh, it's great. Yeah, I, agree with, uh, I agree with Chris. If, if we can have a city drive some standard, uh, whether supply chain or some other more like uh, how, how like uh, today we, we deal with pandemic in the in healthcare industry, uh, there's uh, like certain standard for FDA, there's certain standard to be a doctor, uh, to be uh, like a hospital, how, what kind of service, right? So if, if CTA can keep in evolving, and like Mark said, keep the innovation and uh, follow the chain, and then we, we can we can become more, more successful to fight in the cyber crime. Uh, no, thanks. Yeah, no, I think that's that's right. Well, we're actually almost out of time, so I'm going to go around one more time and let you you know provide your your parting thoughts, uh, wisdom uh, for this. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy schedules to you know, have this conversation. And I very much have appreciated your support from all of you um, over the last few years as we've been on this uh, on this journey, on this quest uh, to uh, raise the level of cybersecurity across the, across the ecosystem. Um, but Ken, sort of uh, final, you know, final uh, closing thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, Michael, just, just want to appreciate all your leadership and uh, the team did a great job making CTA so successful today. And definitely going forward, we'll see CD will keep in driving the, the cybersecurity industry, uh, get better and better, higher standard, and at the same time, uh, more efficient, and uh, all the member and also whole industry benefit from the CTA. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mark? Yeah, I would uh, echo what Ken just said there and uh, and say if I, I'm not exactly sure who's on. I know we've got a big audience here, but um, if you're in a company, a Security company that's not in the CTA, uh, I can assure you, um, it's it's fine to come over the fence and get in the water. It's good over here. Right? Um, certainly, that's the uh, the tide that the world is going in, and it'd be very helpful for your business uh, if you did that. So, I'd encourage everybody to to join if you have not yet joined, and, and uh, reiterate um, Ken's comment, Michael. Thank you for your leadership and and endurance with this as well. Oh, thank you, and I, Chris. Yeah, I will also thank you, Michael, for your leadership. And thanks to everyone who helped build the CTA into what it is today and the people, the, the men and women that are working uh, to make it a success. And look, I think, you know, look, it's, it's Black History Month. So I'll just say there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think the CTA really embodies that. So uh, that's, that's my parting shot for, uh, for you today. 
Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, and I think that the, you know, the, the number of people, I, I will just close by saying what is amazing to me is the number of people from all of our different companies that have to be involved in this and in, in this effort. And if you look at, you know, the number of people spread across, um, spread across our 32 members that are regularly engaged with CTA in some fashion, we are now well north of 200 um, people, you know, on a regular basis working with CTA at, you know, spread across our, our member companies. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, one of the most, uh, one of the most impressive things is uh, that it's that many people that are having a regular engagement with uh, their peers uh, and others across the, uh, you know, across the industry. And that is really what gives CTA a lot of its strength uh, as well. So I'll just close by saying thank you again for uh, joining us, and I will look forward to the next four years. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, we will close out the webinar for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.